your HLG light has a wireless adapter pre-installed that allows your lights to be operated wirelessly within the Growflux platform. Before you get started, you must already have your Growflux account and access point set up. If you have not done so already, see the link in the description to see how to set up the access point. Now, before we start working with the lights, let's first discuss how to create zones within the Growflux app. To get started, log in to the Growflux app and navigate to Lighting Zones. Before we move forward, it is important to remember that zones are groups of lights that allow you to organize your farm. One access point can have devices in many different zones, and zone relationships can easily be changed at any time with the Growflux app. A zone can contain as few as one light or hundreds of lights. Once your lights are added to a zone, your light schedules and configurations are broadcast to all lights in this zone simultaneously. This saves a ton of time when you have lots of lights. When creating zones, it is helpful to think about how you'd prefer to control your lights. For example, you may have two zones, one for vegetative growth and one for flowering growth, considering the lights in each of these areas will be using very different schedules. Let's create these zones now. Click Create New Zone and give it a descriptive name. Now we have our two zones. But perhaps you'd prefer to break up your flower room into two areas of control, in which case you would need to create an additional zone and name them appropriately. So let's rename flower room to flower room racks one to five and create another zone named flower room racks six to 10. We advise as a best practice that you create all of the zones of control that you'd like to have in your facility before adding devices into zones. We are now ready to begin bonding lights to the Growflux mesh. This process only needs to be done once, and when complete, you will be able to remotely monitor and control your lights from any device with the Growflux app. Growflux mesh can form very large networks of lights and provides high reliability connectivity to your lighting system. Every HLG light will propagate this wireless mesh connection and the sub gigahertz signal provides extended range and penetration in dense buildings. Devices are bonded to Growflux mesh through an invitation process. In the app, an invitation is a single tap, but behind the scenes, your Growflux mesh devices are negotiating a sophisticated mesh network structure that ensures reliability in your farm. It is important to remember that once your access point is set up, Bluetooth on your device is not necessary to control your lights. All controls happen through the Ethernet connection to the access point and through the Growflux mesh across your lights. To bond the light to Growflux mesh, Lights have to be within a few hundred feet of the access point. For large installations, it is important to remember that mesh invitations are only sent from the access point and that mesh invitations are not actually propagated by other mesh devices. That means that devices at the edge of the mesh need to be within range of the access point for the invitation process, but once they're bonded to Growflux mesh, they can be moved further away and then connect through other lights. Lights should be within a few hundred feet of the access point, and your light should be plugged into a power source. Lights do not need to be illuminated during this process. Feel free to manually set them to off with the buttons on the wireless adapter. The network status indicator on the wireless adapter should blink red when the light is first plugged in. This red light will turn off after three minutes. If the network status indicator is blinking red or is off, the light is ready to be invited to the Growflex mesh. If it is blinking blue or is solid green, then it is already bonded to an access point. If it is already bonded to an access point, the device will need to be factory reset before bonding to another access point. A video on how to perform a factory reset is linked in the description. Now let's invite your HLG lights to the Growflex mesh. You can invite devices from your smartphone or from any device through the browser-based interface. 
Go to the menu, then tap Add New Devices. Scroll down and select HLG, then tap Invite. You will see the network status indicator flash white briefly, then begin to flash blue. This means your light is now bonding to the Growflux mesh. This process can take about a minute per light for the first time it is bonding to an access point. After it bonds to an access point, this indicator will change to solid green. After your light is successfully bonded, it will connect to Growflux mesh much faster. If you ever power cycle a bonded light, you will see the blinking blue indicator for a few seconds before it connects and turns green. It will take around 60 seconds per light to bond, so expect 10 lights to take about 10 minutes. We recommend inviting small batches of lights at a time to make it easier to apply the right names to lights and apply the right lights to your zones. After each light bonds, it will show up in the recently added list. Each light will bond randomly. To understand which device has bonded, go to the recently added list in the Invite Devices area, or go to All Devices from the menu. Tap a light, then tap Identify. Your light should flash for 10 seconds. Now let's talk about what to do if your light doesn't bond. If the network status indicator does not flash white and then begin blinking blue, you may need to move the light closer to the access point. Likewise, if this indicator light is blinking blue for more than several minutes, try moving the light closer to the access point. Once your light is bonded to the access point, you can try moving it further away. Now that your lights are connected to Growflux Mesh, it is time to configure them. From the All Devices list, or from the Recently Added list, tap a light to enter the Settings panel. If you haven't done so already, give the light a descriptive name. Then choose a zone to apply to this light, and finally, select the appropriate HLG model that you purchased. Click Save. You will notice that the indicator lights on the buttons to the wireless adapter just turned off. This means that the light has been assigned to the zone, and any lighting schedules on that zone have been applied to that light. Once lights are zoned, the manual control buttons are disabled. However, these buttons are automatically re-enabled if the light ever loses its mesh connection, if the access point is unplugged, or if the access point loses internet connectivity. Finally, keep in mind that if the zone you choose already has an active light schedule assigned, it will automatically be loaded onto your light. And depending on the settings and the time of the day, your light may turn on. For larger installations, use the batch command button on the all devices list to configure multiple devices in one step.